Hi there and welcome to Global Goals. In this video, we'll be previewing Group A of this year's World Cup. Host Qatar will definitely go in as underdogs, I think it's fair to say. Though they may fancy the chances against South American side, Ecuador, who they'll be coming up against. The other teams in this group are AFCON champions Senegal and two-time World Cup winners uh, the Netherlands. But it's fair to say we'll be expecting to come through this group. Um, joining me today to take you through everything in this group are analysts Nicholas, Charlie and Harry. Uh, firstly, Harry, I'll hand you over to you. Can you give Qatari fans any hopes for their prospects? Well, surprisingly away, Qatar have in fact had success in other international tournaments. First winning the Gulf Cup in 2014 with a win against Saudi Arabia before lifting the AFC Asian Cup with a 4-1 victory over Japan. So there is at least a bit of pedigree and experience in this squad led by captain Hassan al Haydos. But Oase, do, uh, do you guys think there's any chance of them pulling off an upset or are they just making up the numbers? Sorry, to be honest, I mean, let's be honest, if there's a really good reason for why this is the first World Cup in forever, basically, which is, and that's only because of the host. So, you know, it goes to show that there hasn't particularly been much talent there. Uh, Nicholas, are you, inclined, are you inclined to agree? Yeah, I would agree. I think they might maybe get one, maybe, maybe positive result, but I can't see them getting through the group, to be honest. Yeah, no, uh, Charlie, how about you? Do you give any hope to Qatari fans out there? I think Qatar could cause maybe a surprise with their home soil uh, advantage. However, it's surprising to know that they have won seven tournaments, including three Gulf Cups. Um, but I think this is the World Cup, remember, we've got to up the uh, ante and there's a lot more teams that are capable of, uh, of doing better than Qatar. But I could see them maybe possibly winning a few games, but I, I can't see them uh, getting out of the group. Yeah, no, I think there's general consensus there that they, they are just here probably to make up the numbers. It might spring with the old surprise, maybe against Ecuador. Uh, and they could exceed expectations, but you know there are s stronger teams in this group. Uh, one of them is Senegal. Um, what do you think of their aspirations for this tournament, Harry? Yes, yeah, so, so obviously any side featuring Ballon d'Or runner-up Sadio Mane is likely to feel good about their tournament prospects, but Senegal is far from a one-man team. Mane's incredible goal-scoring record for club and country is supported by the defensive stability of Kalidou Koulibaly and goalkeeper Edouard Mendy, while the pace and directness of Ismail Assar means any defence that faces Senegal will have their hands more than full. I think this, this could be the year's dark horse heading into the tournament. What about you, always? Yeah, Harry, look, I mean, the fact that they won the African Cup of Nations, which is a competition that's getting stronger and stronger every year, goes to show that there is some real talent there. And, you know, like you mentioned, with the likes of Mane, Koli, Bali, Smelisar in their ranks, they're certainly capable of causing a few stirs. Uh, Charlie, what do you think? I think Sadio Mane can cause some surprises. I mean, last season he got 23 goals in all competitions. I think he can really do well for Senegal. He's got that functionality that's very useful for a team. He can play right wing, left wing, he can play at the cam, he can play centre forward. He can be very useful for Senegal. Koulibaly is a very good in defence, he's very good at aerial movements and he, he also provides a lot of stability in that back four. I think he can be quite crucial, uh, especially in the centre-back role. Um, but we'll see, I mean, Mendy's a bit of a question mark because he currently is out of form at Chelsea, but we'll have to wait and see whether or not uh, this will uh, reignite his momentum heading into the tournament. Yeah, because Charlie mentioned some of the talent, I'm sure, there. Mm. Uh, but where do you see them getting to, assuming they get out of the group, which I think we're all fairly convinced they will, how far do you see them getting? Maybe the last 16, maybe quarterfinals, it, sort of if they got a favourable draw in the last 16, as they are one of maybe the more strong African teams. But yeah, no, no further than the quarterfinals, I would say. Yeah, and I think quarters would be a fairly su successful campaign, excuse me, for them uh, in this year's tournament. Um, but... I reckon the most well well known name in this group would be that of the Netherlands. It's fair to say they have failed to meaningfully impress at recent tournaments, uh, and they've been surpassed by the European and worldwide uh, rivals. But with the players they've got at the moment, uh, should we be expecting more of them? Harry, what can you tell us about the Netherlands? By the way, as you touched upon there, after finishing second and then third at the 2010 and 2014 World Cups, the Netherlands have endured a barren spell, failing to qualify for two of the three major tournaments since. After a qualifying campaign that saw them concede just eight goals, however, the Orange may believe this is their year. Interestingly, the Netherlands have never lost a World Cup match in 90 minutes by more than one goal. Back to you, always. Okay, so yeah, that is a very interesting start, and it goes to show that even when they are beaten, you know, it's rarely convincing. Um, Nicholas, look, the, the, the talent we've got at the Netherlands at the moment is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty decent, I think it's fair to say. Um, how, how far do you see them getting? 
Yeah, I mean, I think they could do well. I mean, you never quite know with the Netherlands. They are a good team, but as you as you alluded to in your introduction, they always sort of n never quite uh, are good enough. So, uh, like Senegal, probably mid quarters, maybe a semi final, but I can't see them. I can't see them winning it. Yeah, I think that's fair. And Charlie, um, quick one from you. How how far do you see them getting? And which players are you are you going to be particularly looking out for? Um, I think Frankie Dion could be a good shout. He's uh, got a very versatile passing ability, along with his sort of box-to-box -box role he has in that midfield. He's also very good at interceptions in the middle of the pitch, and that could be quite useful on the counter-attack, let's say, for example. Um, and they've also got Virgil van Dijk. Obviously, the presence of Anfield is very good for him since he's got 68 games and counting, but I think that goes to show he's got very good defensive ability, and that can be really much utilised for the Netherlands squad. But we'll see what Netherlands can do. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting. I mean, they have got one of the one of the higher quality teams uh, in this tournament. I would say the manager's been working wonders there recently. Um, but we'll finish uh, for them for now. Um, and the final side in this group are Ecuador, who are featuring in their fourth ever World Cup. Um, Harry, how can the South American side, South American side, excuse me, feel about the chances and just familiarise us, uh, some of us who may not be uh, too clued up on them, with what we can expect? Yeah, they, they could definitely make an impact at this World Cup here. And after finishing above size like Colombia and Chile in an impressive qualifying campaign, Ecuador will be hoping to match their best ever finish and qualify from their group. Enna Valencia and Michael Estrada combined for 10 strikes over a qualifying effort that saw their side dispatch Colombia 6-1 and Uruguay 4-2. Brazil were the only CONMEBOL country to score more than Gustavo Alfaro's side, perhaps meaning Brighton and Hove Albion fans won't be the only ones heavily invested in the, this team's exploits. What do you think, Always? Yeah, look, Charlie, there is a, there is a Brighton interest there with Casido in particular, who was really impressed for, for, for the uh, a, a South Coast team uh, doing well for them. Um, you just hope that if they are to be a bit of a mini Brighton, their kind of expected goals to goals ratio is a bit better. Um, but Charlie, look, you and Nicholas have both been fairly confident that Senegal and Netherlands will qualify. So is it a case of Qatar and Ecuador fighting it out for the, for, the, for the wooden spoon, so to speak? I would say so, yeah, definitely. I think Ecuador, as much as uh, they say they do have a good squad, they are on poor form, unfortunately, at the minute, out there, 10 games. They currently have seven draws and only two wins and one loss, which on paper sounds actually OK, but I think the lack of wins maybe doesn't give them much hope. But this is the perfect opportunity for Ecuador to capitalise on that with the mentality of the team. They can throw it in and say, say look, we've got a World Cup coming up, let's just get on with it. They don't have any star players, they've got nothing to lose. I think they should just go for it. Yeah, Nicholas, so given what Charlie said there about the qualifying record and Harry said, you know, the, the, the amount of goals they've scored, I guess there is a bit of hope, isn't there? Yeah, there definitely is. What they might lack in quality, they'll probably make up in sort of team spirit, team spirit which, can, which can get you quite far in the tournament. And if they get a positive result against Qatar in their first game, then you never know. But yeah, I don't know. They could be outsiders of getting out of the group, but it does feel a bit unlikely with Senegal and the Netherlands in there. Yeah, it will certainly be interesting to see how it all pans out. Um, but f unfortunately, that's all we've got time for for this uh, preview video. But stay tuned for the next one. And from what's it? Thank you for listening and goodbye.